with the latest supposed discovery of seven planets in the so-called Trappist One star system. This is an absolute complete joke. Nothing more than science fiction. I'm going to play some video clips and I'll break it all down with William Shatner playing as, as, as I stated so many times, world be nothing more than a stage. And William Shatner, interesting enough, playing the role, of course, of Captain Kirk in the original Star Trek series back in the 60s, of course, known for exploring different worlds, exploring, exploring different planets. And I'm going to show some video clips, as I've shown before on my channel, my videos. Basically, he's an anti-science guy calling science nothing more than science fiction, which is the absolute truth. But, of course, William Shatner being only an actor, who's going to take him seriously? And this is, again, the world being nothing more than a stage, the world of opposites where they're going to have an actor tell you the absolute truth. And these lying scientists, such as Dr. Mishukaku, tell you absolute lies. You see the Masonic hand sign, okay? He's just nothing more than a lying mason. I'll get to more on this later on in the video. But first off, again, let's let's play these video clips, then I'll break it all down. Nothing more, of course, than basically just artwork. Now this is, you know, all you need to do is provide artwork, you know, CGI. You know, concepts of what supposedly what people are seeing through telescopes or through satellite images. And this is enough to convince millions upon millions of people that these planets exist. It's a complete joke, once again. The big news is that around a very nearby cold, small star, we found seven rocky, Earth sized planets, all of which could potentially have liquid water. For me, it's mind blowing. The first time I saw what the system had in it, I just was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> and then I looked at the data myself, I'm like, yep, yeah, there they all are. They're she said she looked at the data. Now, we'll take a listen to this clip, again, from Mishu Kaku on CBS. And here is the data. Take a listen to, again, what the data is. It's a complete joke, once again. One step closer to answering the age-old question, are we alone in the universe? Now That's what it's about, too. Pushing the whole idea of the so-called extraterrestrials from other worlds. NASA announced the discovery of seven Earth-sized planets around a star about 40 light-years away from Earth. That translates to 235 trillion miles. All seven could have water, which means the key to life is like ours there. Three of the planets fall in the habitable zone. That's where liquid water on the surface is most likely. CBS News Science and Futurist contributor, that's Michio Kaku, is a physics professor at the City University of New York, Welcome, we haven't seen you in a long time. One step toward that, to find another planet in outer space, perhaps with oxygen, perhaps with liquid oceans, perhaps with radio transmissions, perhaps some life form. Not just one. Yeah, that's right, I we have say, seven triplets. possible yeah. candidates. Yeah. This is unprecedented. Astronomers are just jumping up and down right now. I'm going to stop right there for a second and get back to what this female employee with NASA stated. Which is talking about, yes, I looked at all the data myself. It's all there, okay? Now let's get back to, again, what she's talking about. What is the data? Let's take a look. Now take a listen to the question by the newsman working for at CBS and take a listen to the response by Mishu Kaku. Unbelievable. How did they actually find these? Well, it's very difficult because these planets cannot be seen directly. However, when they go in front of the mother star, it dims the light from the mother star, mm -hmm. and that's how we do it. We look... So basically, from shadows, looking at a star, you see shadows, supposed shadows, passing in front of the star. And that's basically the data that, again, that the NASA employee was getting all excited about. Yep, they're there, based on shadows. Completely ridiculous. And they call what they do science. Give me a break. Again, let's continue with Mishukaku. And that's how we do it. We look for periodic dimming of stars, and that is the characteristic of a planet moving in front of the star. So two planets were discovered in 2016, and an additional five just recently. And all you see is animation. I felt super excited, amazed by the existence of University of Elijah. Lie. It's a big lie in Belgium, and Belgium being 33 in numerology. 
pre-existence of the system was was kind of Michael as well being pretty of free. shock. Look at this image here. You have the sun. And you have these, the planets, and you see all the water. Some type of mockery here. Like water can't stick to a ball. What is this all about with NASA? Give me a break. It's more mockery, more less. standing on one of these planets, you actually see a lot of them sort of in the sky, whipping by on these very short orbital periods. Now she's just storytelling. Again, with Mishukaku stating it's just shadows passing in front of a star. So what is this all about, what she's talking about? Makes no, it makes no sense. But of course, you know, the drones are not going to ask any questions. They're going to say, okay, she's a so-called scientist working for NASA. She must be telling the truth. It's called blind faith in these so-called scientists. And again, that's how the majority of the masses are. They don't question anything these scientists say. Just like a religion. No different whatsoever. You have the theory of evolution, the theory of gravity, the string theory, theory of relativity. But I guess all these theories, you put them together, and it becomes facts. That's how it works in this world, I guess. Let's continue on. This is an excellent, fantastic discovery. Yeah. Shadows crossing in front of a star. An amazing discovery. Give me a break. Now, exact same concept like I mentioned earlier with William Shatner. Basically stating the same thing. Playing the role of opposition... Talking about basically the same thing I just stated. Just shadows in front of a star. Shadows that cross in front of a star that suggest there's a planet. And it's a big enough planet to be the size of the M1 of the Earth. Is it possible that life exists on that planet that's only a shadow in a telescope? Only a shadow in a telescope. Those are the imaginative things that NASA are looking at that's every bit as passionately imaginative as science fiction. That's all science is, is science fiction. And again, William Shatner being no hero, just playing the role of basically controlled opposition. Same thing here with last year, as i shown before in a previous video during this convention in Las Vegas. Where again, he's playing the role of being Mr. Anti-Science, which I find hilarious. Just take a listen. How, how do you prove a black hole? How do you know those gravitational waves prove the collision of two black holes? Somehow, eventually, they are able to observe phenomena. No, they can't observe. <laughs> it's too far away. It's too theoretical. How do we know what they're saying is true? It, you know what it really is? It's all science fiction. <laughs> you go again. Does that make you a skeptic? Funny how the audience actually collapsed here. And of course, deep down inside, you know, being fans of science fiction and again, the whole idea of outer space, out of respect for the old man, you know, being a fan of his, they're gonna, they're gonna support him, but deep down inside, <laughs> they're like, what's going on here? No, well, science fiction says, this is a story that I'm making up. And, and there's this thing called wormholes. And that's a science fiction concept. Although these scientists says, say there are wormholes. How do you know? I find it quite hilarious how he's playing that role once again of Mr. Anti Science. One thing interesting to note behind him, you know, this whole entire production, with him playing this role, you take a closer look. If you know anything about Freemasonry, you'll see. The whole entire concept is not pulled out of thin air. With You see the three within the door, and then you see the three stripes, basically. You get your coded for 33. And of course, all about Freemasonry, the highest degree in the Scottish Rite being 33. And again, the door itself being orange. Basically, you get your dual 33s with orange, the only color in numerology that is 33 now. Again, I talked about William Shatner just playing the role on the world stage. It's all the world is. It's nothing but a stage. Everything you see on TV is 100% controlled. Just like pro wrestling, there's good guy versus bad guy. They're all working together. They're all buddies behind the scenes. Just like you see here, Mishukaku with the Masonic hand sign. And then you see William Shatner as well, doing the same Masonic diamond sign as well.
It's going to be very obvious. Just like Angela Merkel, the Chancellor of Germany, doing the, the diamond sign, which is nothing more than a code with diamond being 33. Just a code for the number 33 without displaying the actual digits. I want to move on here a little bit. Another example, just another liar, another deceiver, which I call Neil the Greaseball instead of DeGrasse. Let's take a look here what he says here during this podcast with Joe Rogan, talking about the supposed moon landing and trying to prove to people that don't believe in it how they're wrong. And this guy doesn't even know. He can't even get his facts straight. Take a listen to what he says, and I'll break it all down. And images of the landing site of the Apollo missions. So I said, okay. Here's a website where we sent, uh, in fact, it wasn't us, it was the Chinese. I think it was the Chinese or Europeans. Can't even get it right. He doesn't know if it was the Chinese or the Europeans that more recently supposedly landed on the moon. It's back in 2013. This astrophysicist can't even get his so-called facts right. All it is is a bunch of lies anyways. But nevertheless, I'll continue on and I'll, and I'll show that footage, the basic garbage animation footage that he claims is basically real which is a complete joke. Sent a, a probe to an orbiter to the moon so that it was close enough, because ground-based telescopes are not, uh, don't, they don't have the resolution to see the landing sites. But if you get close enough to the moon, you can. It, it photographed the entire surface of the moon. Yeah. And I'll stop right there. Enough of this, enough of this clown and him yapping away, telling nothing more than lies, nothing more than again, a deceiver. And the reason he uses the name, the full name, Neil deGrasse Tyson, it's all coded. Put in that middle name because DeGrasse is 33. Just like going back in time with Charles Darwin doing the Masonic sign of silence, sign of confidentiality. Same entire concept with his surname, Darwin being 33. Just another Mason going back in time part of the world stage. That's what it all comes down to. The Masonic, Masonic again, sign of silence or secrecy. Just like the Masonic G itself has multi meanings, never a single meaning when it comes to Freemasonry. It's all about duality. It means grand architect. It could mean gravity. It could mean Gnostic. It could mean many things, not just one meaning. But one of the hidden meanings is, again, I showed this before in previous videos, the alphabet, of course, A through Z is 1 through 26. When you flip over the alphabet, you get to G again, and you get your 33. So, again, it's all coded. Again, I can't stress this enough. But a lot of people that know about Freemasonry will try to claim that the G means one thing when it's always multiple meanings. Freemasonry, signs and symbols, it's not basically when it comes down to it, not one single meaning. That needs to be understood. So it's not not a good thing to argue about signs and symbols when it's all about duality and Freemasonry. Now, getting back to what Neil deGrasse Tyson stated, talking about how supposedly China, or as he stated, the Europeans, you couldn't figure it out. And this is the problem with liars. I can't keep their lies straight because, of course, they never went to the moon. It was actually supposedly China. And let's take a look at this, the most ridiculous footage ever seen when it comes to the so-called moon landing mission with this Chinese probe. And this was, it didn't get much footage whatsoever. It didn't get any spotlight with the Western media whatsoever because it was so ridiculous. It was a complete joke. Let's take a look at this footage. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Now the speed is now, uh, and here it is. Seconds. They try to pass this off and as real. Six hundred meters. This garbage footage. They try to pass off as real, and this is why, again, <laughs> it didn't get much coverage in the Western media whatsoever. You know, I have to admit, the U.S. is doing a little bit better job when it comes to fakery and fooling people. The masses, but you're not going to fool anybody. You show this to a child, and they will tell you, this is complete garbage, this is not real. You show this to an indoctrinated adult, they're going to buy it. Because it's on television, like I showed many times. With this quote with, with Richard Nixon, I showed it many, many times, like I said. The American people don't believe anything until they see it on television. TV eats brains when it comes down to it. But again, you can't tell it to people that are in love with the idea of space travel and outer space. You know, ego, pride, you know, people spend their lifetime filling their, their mind with so-called knowledge and intelligence and all they've been fed basically is nothing more than lies. Let's continue on with this fakery just for reference. 
we can see the attitude can and also note with the Chang 3, you flip the E around, you get your code for 33 as well. Always, again, when it comes to Freemasonry, the 33 coded in plain sight. This is the first picture of the moon taken by Chang 3. Well, it seems uh, pretty close already. We can see the lunar surface very clearly. Yes, it is uh, only... Uh, and we are seeing the live feed from Chang'e Pro. This is the pictures taken on the camera. Uh, I'll stop right there real quick. I mean, obviously, this is a complete joke. Nothing more than fakery. It's just, again, China's doing a horrible job of trying to make fake look real. Not like I always say, it's very hard to make fake look real. Here's just a perfect example of that. Continue on. Of Chang'e 3 of the lunar surface. And these are the last 30 minutes for the journey of Chang'e 3 until it landed on the moon. Look at that. That's supposed that to just again. flying from the, off the moon. It landed on the moon. What a joke. Is on the moon. The first They're all clapping. They're all clapping over some garbage CGI footage. That's what it all comes down to. I mean, it's it's beyond pathetic how people can buy this. And again, like I said earlier, this wasn't this was just briefly shown on CNN, like it was nothing more than passing news. This this was a supposed first soft landing since the Soviet Union with the Luna 24 back in 1976. This should have been major news, but no, they're going to highlight Kim Kardashian on CNN or some other bozo in Hollywood, and this. You know, should be a major accomplishment. Basically, the whole world should have knew about it. And <laughs> for obvious reasons, again, I can't stress it enough. Just take a look at this garbage footage. It wasn't. Now, again, getting back to William Shatner and what he stated earlier about science being nothing more than science fiction. He says it multiple times in different interviews. Here's another example with astronomy.com. Take a listen once again to finish off to conclude this video. And your writing and your acting, you've inspired so many people to enter the sciences. How do you balance science with science fiction? Well, they're both the same. Earth, throughout its life, even when it formed, it was spinning. And it got a little wider at the equator than it does at the poles. So it's not actually a sphere. It's, an, it's oblate. And officially it's an oblate spheroid. That's what we call it. But not only that. It's slightly wider below the equator than above the equator. A little chubbier. A little chubbier. Yeah. Chubby's a good way. It's like pear-shaped. How do you like it? They tell you all the time what to do, what to think, what to feel. Do you want to be like a cheap? Like all those other people, man? Da, 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 da. Do you understand? That piece of shit up there, I never like him. I never trust him. This is a, a group of social criminals. These people in the space program. Nassholes, I call them. Space, the final frontier. Space may be the final frontier, but it's made in a Hollywood basement. Fascinating, fascinating, fascinating. Astronauts to the moon. The force can have a strong influence on the weak mind. Conspiracy theorists. They conspir they've been crazy, but now they they're right.